Okay, it's gonna be a hot one today. It's gonna be 82 degrees, so I wanted to move the transplants out um, and line them up against closer towards the back fence. They'll get more shade over there. And then maybe we can plant some things. So let's run outside, see what we can accomplish. These cabbages need to get planted. Oh my goodness. They are not going to appreciate this heat at all. They need to be in the shade for sure. Oh, I need to plant you guys. You should plant the biggest ones and then see. Plant the biggest ones and then see if the smaller ones size up. That's what I should do. We'll see if I have time. All right, we added the lettuce and the cabbage and some of the yarrow that's left. I also still have these leeks that I never transplanted and those four lavender starts. So probably gotta do something with those or throw them out. <laughs> and by throw them out, I mean put them in the compost, obviously. I stuck all of the shade babies here in this little shady nook. I gotta plant these out soon as well. And I'm thinking I'm gonna put them in the front and use them for the, the landscaping. Um, for the two front flower beds. I know that I have been taking a lot of shots of these spring bulbs, but I will not be getting over it. They're so beautiful. This anemone is nearly fully bloomed. Oh my gosh. It's so pretty already. This Heliopsis is starting to show its variegation, which is awesome. It's my favorite perennial flower in the whole garden. It is only 71 degrees. It's 11 o'clock, but we are sweating. <laughs> Julian and I just finished watering the garden, so Everything has a good soak, which should prepare it from between now until about three o'clock. The garden goes into shade uh, somewhere around two to three, so I think it'll be fine. I wish I could capture it better, but the wind blowing all of the blossoms from the dogwood tree around is just so beautiful. It's like raining beautiful little white petals everywhere. May everyone be as happy as a child playing in a pond. <laughs> so I've got my hellebores, my penstemon, and my clematis out. Unfortunately, uh, Julian also took some leaves off of one of the hellebores, but not a big deal. There's enough growth that I think it'll be fine. So I'm going to have to prune that one. And we desperately need to water these guys in. They're drying out pretty quickly in these uh, peat, cocoa core kind of pots that they came in. All right, I took everybody and stuck them in a little shallow tray with some water. Hopefully that will revitalize them so that we can get them put into pots and into the ground. The penstamen is looking, the penstamen is looking worse for wear. She's very wilted. I think it's, uh, the, the branches and everything still feel, or the stems rather still feel firm. Um, I don't think it's dead, but definitely needed, needed a drink for sure. The interior of this cardboard that it came in feels a little waxy, which makes sense because maybe it was sealed a little bit to make it a little more waterproof. I'm going to stuff it in the compost anyway, though, so we'll see how that goes. I'm trying to tell myself that the good thing about perennials is that you can move them if you don't like where they are the first year. They are pretty hardy. You can take them up. You can move them. That being said, I'm thinking that since today it's going to be kind of hot and I don't want this poor baby to die, I'm going to put it in this little shaded corner because this pot will shade it for some time and water it in really well in this corner, let it establish here. And then if I want to move it in the future, I'll move it in the future. But I think, I think this is where the pen statement is going. If you can take any of the peat pots or uh, core linings off of these kinds of transplants before you plant them. It allows the roots to spread easier and this kind of cocoa core matting 
dries out uh, very quickly and you'll find that your plant will your plant roots will also dry out uh, quicker so take this off if you can uh, with as minimal disturbance to the roots as possible there she is all planted in so this clematis is going to need about 10 feet uh, of space and I do need to put it on a trellis however I haven't quite figured the trellis part out yet so I do want it to be in this bed over here where I have the, uh, the little mushroom in the corner. So I'm thinking of centering it here about six inches away from the edge of the raised bed in case I want to put a trellis right up against the edge. So I think that's where I'm going to put it and then train it to a trellis uh, that is going to be right over here. Just haven't exactly picked which trellis <laughs> that's gonna be it there she is so i've got that space yeah that's plenty of space i should be good to go luckily i had uh, an old plant that i had left in there thank you no dig here it is Ugh. and the root ball on this thing was pretty extensive as you see but it had decayed mostly so um i don't know what this was i can't remember but yeah, so perfect little planting hole for my clematis. We've got the hellebore left. Hellebore? Helle hellebore? I've got those left. I've got four of them. Um, oh, I really wanted to put them in pots, but I might just have to just pick a spot and dig them in somewhere. In the future, I would like to build a small deck for this shed to sit on, this two by four shed and along the deck to the side i want those hellebores very specific i know but that would have been ideally where i would have put the pots temporarily uh, around this shed so i know it is a total cop out before today since i can't make a decision and i am paralyzed i am going to plant uh put them here set them aside in this little basin, this little watering dish, and keep them shaded and let them acclimate to the outdoors until I can decide what the heck I'm gonna do with them. It is finally too hot for me, so I have packed everything up and we are going back inside in case I don't see ya. Thanks for hanging out with us today.